OpenAI just announced Codex, their agentic coding product. The actual coding agent feels very unique, and not only that, they released a model that was post-trained to be even better than O3 at coding. So I'm gonna go over it all, let's get into it. So let me show you the interface first, because that's the most unique part in my opinion. It feels very ChatGPT, and it isn't a VS Code plugin or a VS Code fork. This is native in the cloud. It feels much more akin to a Devon. So you connect your GitHub repo right here. You have the different branches right there. You can either ask questions of your code base or assign it a task to code. Now, the thing that I really like, which I think a lot of other coding agents don't have yet, is multiple agents going out and coding in parallel. Now, of course, that can be difficult if all of these agents are working on the same branch. There's going to be potential conflicts, but that's what Git is for. So each time you launch a task, it's going to appear right here. You can see it says starting container. Every single task that you launch will be its own container, will have its own environment, will have its own keys. And so you can really think of it as a truly isolated environment for every single task. And the cool thing is every single task is essentially a fresh start with that environment. It downloads the code for the first time. It runs the setup commands for the first time. And so once a task is complete, and you can see here, worked for two minutes and 58 seconds, Everything is in the traditional ChatGPT chat interface. I really appreciate how they took a new view on this, and it's not just coding. This is more like vibe coding than traditional coding. So the task is, I want to keep this code base maintainable and bug-free, read through the code and propose tasks that would help me with this goal. So here's one, avoid mutable default arguments, and it's giving a little code segment that it's fixing. Down at the bottom, you can see that you can request changes or ask follow-up questions, basically just vibe coding back and forth with your coding agent. And here is the suggested task right there. And you can see all you have to do is hover over it. It tells you what it's going to change. You click code and then it will actually make those changes. Here's another one. And for this last one, if you click into actually edit the task, you can see here's the task of what it's going to do. You can add something to the end. You can edit it as much as you want and then go ahead and just click code. All right, now you're gonna see it done through the Codex CLI. So similarly, you just describe a task, give it a branch and then get going. When you click into it, here is a console, should feel very familiar, but of course you have the chat interface on the left side. By the way, let's just pause for a second and appreciate how far OpenAI has come on design. I know everything is very simple with their design, but look at this little animated icon that runs as it's running things for you. So you can see a little guy looking around, then it changes back to the kind of traditional code console icon. And so, yeah, little touches like this, I really appreciate. So at the end of a long task like this, you could see it thought for three minutes, 13 seconds, you get a summary, you get the code diffs on the right side, you get the test that ran automatically. And if you hover over, you can see the test status along with any debug codes. Here's all the files that were changed. And right up here in the top right, you can see a push button. So you can push the code to GitHub. All right, so some initial thoughts. One, they rolled out their own custom model for this, built on top of O3. This model, called Codex 1, used reinforcement learning end-to-end -to, -end to make it especially good at coding tasks. And they call this out in the live stream. They didn't focus on the benchmarks. They focused on real-world coding tasks. And one other thing that they said in the live stream is that Codex, the actual coding agent product, doesn't just wrap one of their pre-existing models in a wrapper and some scaffolding, they actually developed this model specifically for that coding environment. And that seems like a shot against things like Cursor and Windsurf, but let's talk about Windsurf for a second. It has been rumored, strongly rumored, nearly confirmed that they bought Windsurf for $3 billion. And so just the same week, they're releasing their own coding agent product. So it's going to be interesting to see how this strategy unfolds. They kind of spoke negatively about that kind of coding framework where you just have an agent agent wrapped around one of the existing models that they provide. And then just yesterday, Windsurf released their own model. So it's really interesting. Windsurf is heading towards OpenAI. OpenAI is heading towards Windsurf. And then they 
got acquired by OpenAI. So we'll see how this all plays out. Let me pause for a second to show you another amazing AI product, the sponsor of today's video, Recraft. Recraft is an incredible image generation and editing tool built for creators and teams. Recraft gives you control over the entire design process and is used by 3 million users and teams at companies like Netflix and Asana. And I've talked about Recraft before, but they are rolling out two brand new features, infinite style library and style mixing, both available to the public right now. The infinite style library allows you to browse through different visual styles that you can apply to your images easily. From photo realism to illustration, you can search by theme or object and apply them instantly. The second feature style mixing lets users blend multiple styles together just by adjusting their relative weight, a really cool and creative way to make your images unique. This allows for fully custom visuals while keeping the brand consistency intact. Try the new Recraft features today. They're offering my viewers $11 off any plan. Use code Matthew 11. I'll drop the link in the description below. Thanks again to Recraft. Now back to the video. All right, I wanna play this segment where Greg Brockman describes his vision and OpenAI's vision for the future of coding and agents in particular. And remember, Greg Brockman is a co-founder of OpenAI. So listen to this because it's fascinating. One of the things that I find really exciting about how Codex works is it has very non-human strengths and weaknesses. And so it really means that you get much more out of it if you start thinking of of it as not just a static tool that you just use, like you know, just I, uh, without having to build expertise. But if you um, if you really optimize your code base around what it can do, you start like honestly, uh, most of what Codex benefits from is just what is good software engineering practices um, in terms of of modular code bases with good tests and things like that. Um, that you're able to just move so fast, and we've seen that we've seen that happen. Uh, internally uh, with many people at OpenAI. All right, so what he's saying is essentially when an engineer at production scale is working with AI and learns the AI's weaknesses and strengths and kind of works around that, designs the code base around that, that's when you're gonna get the most out of these coding agents. And that's really interesting and something I've been talking about for a while. I think code base best practices are going to be changing. I think code bases are gonna be changing. Coding languages are gonna be changing because more and more code is gonna be written by AI and we need to optimize the language to be written for AI to actually do so. And next, he's going to talk about a mini version of the model, which can be used in Codex CLI, that's command line interface using it locally. And apparently sign in with ChatGPT is coming. So let's listen. We also are continuing to develop Codex CLI, which again is a local agent that runs on your laptop. We're releasing a mini model today, and we're also going to be releasing sign in with, with ChatGPT to make it easier to get up and running. Yeah, he kind of just glossed over that announcement, sign in with ChatGPT. That's a huge announcement. Now, if you think about it, there's two different form factors that we've talked about. There's the local synchronous on your computer version, but there's also what Codex is of an asynchronous in the cloud runs on its own computer. And we think that the future is going to be these two systems coming together. And that is the Windsurf acquisition right there. So Windsurf is completely local. Codex is in the cloud. He's kind of given you the playbook that, yeah, that's why we acquired them. This is not a competing product. And I kind of agree. There's a use case to use coding agents locally on your computer and have all the files stored locally. And there's also a use case for doing it in the cloud. And whichever company brings together the best of both worlds is going to win. All right, so Codex is rolling out, of course, to the top tier users first, ChatGPT Pro, Enterprise, and Team Users Today with support for Plus and EDU coming soon. And this is really interesting. Task completion typically takes between one and 30 minutes, depending on completion complexity. And that is fascinating because even with vibe coding, the longest task usually only takes a few minutes. Now let's look at some performance benchmarks. Here is Suibench verified. This is accuracy over number of attempts and Codex beats 03 high across the board until they just about converge at eight attempts. Here is OpenAI internal suite tasks. 01 high down at 11% and look at that codex one at 75% compared to 03 high at 70 and 04 mini high at 67%. So 
they really did train the best coding model amongst their family of models. Now, of course, I want to put it up against Gemini 2.5 Pro. Maybe we'll do that. So Codex Mini, the mini version of the Codex model, is available through the API priced at $1.50 per million input tokens, $6 per million output tokens, 75% prompt caching discount. So that's it. Let me know what you think. How does it compare to Windsurf? How does it compare to Cursor or Replit or all of the other awesome vibe coding tools out there? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.